Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to set theory and we'll look at some symbols and terminology. So first, if we're going to talk about set theory, it'd be really helpful to know what is a set. A set is a collection of objects called elements. So the things within the set are called elements. Sets could either be infinite or finite. So there can be an, a set with infinitely many elements or a set with finite number of elements. And generally, sets are given in one of three ways. First is a word description, which would always start out with the set that, the set of, the set which, blah, blah, blah. The listing method, which is always in braces, and it's just where you open a brace and you start listing the, ob uh, the elements of the set, and then you close the brace when, when you're done. Braces are like fancy grouping symbols. They look like this. Um, but it turns out if you just do squiggles, that basically looks like braces as well. It's just really careful. You, you don't want to use parentheses or brackets because those have other meanings. And so we don't use those. We must use braces. And the third way is what's called set builder notation. This is also always in braces. And so what we do is we usually will open up the brace and then you just put a variable X and you put this long bar and this bar means such that. So this long bar, if you're at your, well, you're obviously at your computer. Well, you could be on your phone. Um, it's right above the, the backslash. So right above enter, there's the backslash. And then there's the, if you hit shift and then hit backslash, that'll give that you that such that bar. So it's not like a, a, a lowercase l or anything like that. And, and then we define what it is. So it depends on what x is. If x is, uh, let's say, any number bigger than 1, then we would just say x is greater than 1 and we would close the brace. So this would be set builder notation. X is an element of the set, that's this, such that X is greater than one. So X is some real number greater than one. If I wanted it to be integers, for example, then we would say X such that, so integers could be positive or negative. We would say X is an element of the integers. Or if I wanted it to be positive integers, we could say integers plus for positive integers, or you could say x is greater than zero and x is an element of the integers. So set builder notation has a, a lot of different ways that we can express what we're looking for. Okay, so how to write sets in various ways. So if we're given zero, one, two, three, four, five, I notice that this is a finite set, it stops at five. If I wanted it to keep going, then there would be a dot, dot, dot behind it. The word description, one word possible word description is this is the set of whole numbers less than six. The set of whole numbers less than six. Or I could say the set containing the digits zero, one, two, three, four, five. If I want to use the listing method, we can just list them out inside the braces. For set builder notation, we could say X such that X is a whole number less than six. Or we could also use, uh, you know, you could get fancy here and say X such that, let's put this in braces, X is less than six. And uh, X is an element of the whole numbers. And if you're not familiar with this notation that I'm using here, um, this is talked about in a future video, but this just means is an element of. So it's basically like an E, but it's very curved, uh, uppercase E, it looks like this. It almost looks like the Euro sign with only one thing in the middle, is an element of. So we could say that too, although that was clearly more words than the first one. Okay, a little more about set builder notation. Oh, here we go. The first X represents any element in the set. That line means such that, and then the section after describes the elements in the set. You can use words, you can use a list, you can use greater than or less than, you can use the, the number, the, the subsets of real numbers, however it works. Okay, a little more information about sets. Sets are frequently given a single capital letter name, except we don't use U. U is reserved for the universal set, and that gets discussed later. Not in this video, but in a future video. Looking at our first example, we're going to use the listing method to create a set, the set of primary colors. Remember, to give your set a name. And we don't get to name it like Billy or Peter. No, we use a single capital letter. Usually you want to use something that makes sense, so I might use the letter P or the letter C. 
So we can say p equals, and then we're using the listing method, so we're going to open up a brace. We're going to write the three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And here is a set using the listing method. In our second example, we're going to give a complete listing of all elements of the set containing the perfect squares less than 50. So I might call this one S since I think I used P last time. And the perfect squares would be 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and 49. So again, I you gave it a set name, a single capital letter, and then I followed it up uh, with all of the perfect squares less than 50. In our next example, we're going to give a complete listing of all elements of the set of whole numbers that are less than zero. But wait, there are no whole numbers less than zero, so this set doesn't have any elements. We can represent a set with no elements in one of two ways, and we can call it one of two things. We call it either the null set or the empty set, and the notation is for the null set you would just do like a zero with a kind of a slash through it, and that represents the null set, or you can use the empty set, which is literally a set with nothing in it. You cannot combine the two because that would create a set, so we just use one or the other. So up here, I could say whole numbers equals this, the empty set, or the set is the null set. One more thing to talk about is that sets should be well-defined. For it to be useful, it should be well-defined, which means it relies on facts and is an unambiguous. So, for example, the set containing fabulous movies is not well-defined because fabulous movies will change based on the person you ask. One person might say, well, obviously, When Harry Met Sally belongs in that set, while somebody else would say, absolutely not. So we want to make sure that our sets are well-defined.